just uh, two questions for you. One, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about, I saw Blake Fisher's listed as a starter at right tackle for this game. And is he on any limitations and how has his health progressed? Well, I didn't know going into bowl practice if he was going to be able to play. And, and he's gotten to the point where um, he's ready to play and ready to help us. And so we obviously know what type of talent Blake is, um, you know, obviously being the starters, we went to the Florida State game. And so, you know, with the loss of Lug um, during bowl practice, this is something that kind of naturally happened. And so we wanted to put him on the right side for a few reasons. One, Joe Old has done an unbelievable job as our left tackle and has done a um, been a huge asset to our offensive line um, throughout the course of this year. And then, you know, the ability to kind of not have three moving pieces, right? Instead of moving Blake to left tackle, Joe to right tackle, you know, instead of just leave Joe where he's done a great job and where he's excelled at, move Blake right into that right tackle spot. And, uh, you know, we're, we're extremely excited about having both of those guys on the field. And then uh, just to follow up, have, do you have any feel for uh, what the share of running back snaps is going to look like between uh, Tyree uh, Diggs and maybe a steam as well? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a running back show by committee. And all of them are going to have to play. Um, I think they've all shown the ability to be productive. And, um, you know, I'm excited for those guys to get the carries, to go out there and show what they can do um, in a big, huge, obviously, national televised game. By the uh, injury to uh, Josh Slug, when it happened, what happened? Um, yeah, it, it was uh, – we're in an 11-on-11 situation, and he kind of just planned it the wrong way. It was a, it is a, a minor um, meniscus tear, but he's had it for a while. And I think when he planted it, it kind of flipped the meniscus a little bit more where, you know what, we said, hey, we're going to have to get this thing fixed right away. And so he's had it throughout the season and he's been able to fight through it. And then I think just when he planted the wrong way, I think a part of that meniscus flipped up and they had to go and clean it right away. Which uh, congratulations on making the trip down there. Can you just give us an update on the protocols that you guys have put in place to, to be ready for the game, first of all? Yeah, to me, it's, it's, we're, we're just continue to following the protocols that we've had and that I think the biggest thing now is just the awareness like hey this thing is real and it's realer than it's ever been and so we have to be smart in terms of what we're doing out here in Arizona wearing our masks when we are supposed to and being really really smart about the people we're around you cannot come down here and just go out and hang out and and treat this like a normal bowl trip we have to be really smart and um you know, we're, I think our team is, is definitely understanding the, the case and understanding what we have to do. Are you doing any additional testing right now because of obviously being separated and all coming together, you know, obviously not knowing if there might be some guys that might test positive? Yeah, we're going to lean on, you know, our doctors and, and what we've done in terms of, hey, if you're symptomatic and you show symptoms, we'll test you. Um, if you have uh if you're vaccinated, if you're non-vaccinated, we'll continue with our weekly testing. Hi, Coach Freeman. How are you? I'm great. Good. I was going to ask, as someone with a background as a defensive coordinator, what stands out to you most about OSU's defense this season? Well, you know, I was on the plane for about four hours and tried to watch as much film as I could. Um, and I'm so impressed with how hard they play from every position, but especially their front four. They play extremely hard to relentless um, and they, they, they tackle and they pursue to the ball well. And so it's going to be a huge challenge and the challenge isn't going to be schematically. It's going to be to match their intensity and their, uh, the, the physicality they play with. Defensive play calling. Have you decided uh, what the, what you guys will do there and also maybe of your defensive coaches who will be upstairs and on the field? Yeah, we will still, um, Nick Lazinski will come down because he's had a more active role with the linebackers. Um, so we activated him from the analyst position, senior analyst position to the linebackers and special teams. Um, so he'll come down. Uh, we'll still leave O'Leary up. Um, Elston and Mickens have been down. They'll stay down. And so, you know, all year as, as I lead, I've always been a leader as a teammate. And so it's been a collective group effort in terms of game planning in terms of, hey, hey, what do you guys think on this next third down? You know, at some point, somebody has to call it. And that's what I've done, obviously, um, being a defensive coordinator. But right now, the plan is for Elston to have a lead role, Mike Elston, to have a lead role in terms of who's making the majority of the calls uh, on game day. Now, we're going to work hand in hand like we've done all year. I'm going to be right there with them. We're going to go back and forth and be able to throw ideas off of each other. But the game plan, we've game planned as a group. Um, we've we've kind of put the game plan in as a group, but he'll be the one on Saturday making the majority of the calls. Um, but 
again, I, I think it's best for the group because of he's had more time in the D staff, not just him, but Mike Mickens and Chris O'Leary. They've had more time to just strictly prepare for Oklahoma State's offense. And I would be doing a disservice to our defense if I said, nope, we're doing exactly what I say. I'm the one that's going to call it. I'm the one that's going to do it because I haven't had as much time to prepare for Oklahoma State's offense as those guys have. And so I think this gives our group a better opportunity to have success. That's why I made this decision is that, hey, these guys have spent more time preparing for Oklahoma State than I have in terms of just our defense versus their offense. So let's let those guys, those individuals, and specifically Mike Elson, have the opportunity to call it. And, and again, I'm going to be involved. I'm going to make sure to be, hey, if I want something, I'm going to say, hey, let's do this. If I don't like something, I'll interject, say, let's do this. But he will be the primary play caller uh, for this game. All right, Coach, we're going to finish, finish up with one last question from Matt Freeman, who asked, uh, what makes Jordan Botello effective at the rover, rover position? And is that a permanent move for him? That's a, a move for right now. We will, um, you know, kind of dive in and see if that's the best for his future after the season. But, you know, he's able to play out there in space, be disruptive. Um, he's athletic as heck where he can cover guys man to man, but then, you know, on the perimeter screen games and, and perimeter running games, he's a disruptive factor. And so, you know, I, we looked at more so the, the fact that Foskey and, and um, Justin have done such a good job at that Viper position, you know, and, and Jordan being a third Viper um, versus, Hey, being able to rotate at the, the Rover position, he's going to have more impact being able to be on the field a little bit more at the Rover position and the impact he can make at that position. So his future is to be determined, but I know for this game that I'm excited for him to help us at the Rover position.